I have on the line uh, Sandra, and uh, she is in southern Alberta, and she went through one of this process through a marriage sponsorship, and later her husband was interviewed at the visa office in Africa. Let's find out what happened to the case and what did she know now uh, that if she had known before, things would have been different. Obviously, uh, she is distraught because the application was turned down. The visa uh, interview did not go well and the visa didn't come through. And now she's facing an appeal or a reapplication and a long way ahead of plus time and money and expense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sandra, Sandra, how are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing fine, but like I said, I am worried about Kev's because, like he said, he feels like, and I can understand where he's coming from. His own country has let him down. Well, let's he let's uh, start let's start from a little uh, little way back when you all started, and you don't have to divulge private information about your family no. life in this conversation. We are here to talk about the process of immigration, mm -hmm. process of visa and uh, and how it went so let me let me just ask you uh, your marriage is uh, two years old three years old how old is your marriage three, three. three okay and uh, how much time did you guys spend together living together um i spent two months down there and then he spent the six months up here until he went back in april of this year Okay. So it's only eight months, but I mean, we've known each other for six years, every day, every day, texting, videoing, calling. So, you know, but as far as actually living together, this is why we were hoping that this would come through so that we could get yeah. organized, yeah. I guess, you know. Now, now, you said that you have known uh, him for the past six years. What evidence do you have? Uh, of knowing each other, like contact and chat history and exchanging of messages. Yeah. What contact do you have? I, do you know I, have, I have chat history. I guess we do. We could go back and get... See, Susan was supposed to have sent all this down. I sent her many, many, many messages, photos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I had tons of Christmas pictures and video when we went down there. And I have marriage pictures and stuff that when we got married in Lagos that I sent to her. So I, I don't know what she did if it was sent. I don't know. I never got a confirmation of anything. So, and I mean, we we're just sitting back and trusting and we're paying attention, I guess, because we did not realize the value and the extent of what we were dealing with with immigration now would i be different yes because i have learned so much what what do you think what, what do you think on the basis of feedback what is the visa officer trying to find out from the applicant i mean your husband was interviewed what was the visa officer trying to discover uh, about the background of your husband? What what kind of questions were uh, being I think, she, can't, now this is what Cass told me. I wasn't there, so I can't verify exactly, but I trust him what he said. And he felt that she got stuck on this age difference and she never got off of it. And that was it. And he said, I felt that the way she was interviewing me regardless of that, of that he said, I knew I was pretty much screwed. So this is what he told me. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, so let's uh, let's uh, look at look at what what the immigration is trying to do in these kind of cases. Uh, mm -hmm. there is there is a, and I'm trying trying to I will try to show this on the screen uh, so that people who are watching this can understand uh, mm -hmm. what, what this is now. I mean, uh, of this happening we we were not stupid we were totally aware of the fact that this is going to be an issue that's right so uh so immig immigration on the website have listed in detail uh, uh what how how do they do this it's called a bad faith family yes. relationship provision yes what, yes according to, the, according to the regulation regulation four they need to find out they need to ascertain that 
is this marriage done in good faith or not? So, mm -hmm. so over years, many years ago, and still possibly even now, there were a lot of marriage fraud uh, in Canada. That means people, yeah. people, people had, uh, you know, used marriage to a Canadian citizen or a Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, resident to gain yeah. entry, to gain entry into Canada, and as a result, the immigration now is extra vigilant to yes. find out if there's a possible fraud in this marriage. Now, how, how do they find out? Uh, number one, to, to determine if, uh, if this marriage was primarily done to, to gain entry, to gain immigration into Canada. That's one thing. You, are, are you with me? I am, but you see, at the time we got married, we we were not talking about him coming to Canada. Yeah, well, that, that's good. That's good. Let me let me just finish the background, and then we can look at your case. All right. Yeah. So, the immigration wants to first find out whether this was done in good intention. That means yeah. people people trying to come to come together to to enter into marriage to establish a household, not not anything else right so that's one second second if the if the primary intent is is to is to uh, uh, immigrate then then you don't qualify these tests so so the the it's, it's like it's like this look i want to marry somebody for marriage not for canada yes let's put, let's put it this way if the if the primary intent and motivation is to use the marriage to to immigrate and that's that's a big no for them so yeah. the way they do this is uh, when you submit your application anybody submits their application there's a there's a quite an exhaustive list of evidence that they look for uh, uh -huh. you know I, and i'm going to show you on the screen and and they have they have mentioned this on the on the website as well uh, unfortunately, many applicants, men, not all, unfortunately, many applicants are aware, unaware what to what to show, what to document. Yeah. And I, I would even go further in. I, I always tell people is that when you start your relationship, you have to start collecting the evidence of a relationship as if the visa interview is coming anytime soon, maybe next yeah, year, we, six yeah. months. So I'm just going to show on the screen i don't know can you see my uh, uh, screen or not i think i uh, can you know, but, i can yeah uh it's it's on it's on the government of canada website and it, the title is very clear and self-explanatory yeah i did the already between and 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 for example in this uh in the case of a marriage take take a look at uh, take a look at these things uh i'm just going to read something here so the sponsor and the principal applicant are expected to provide items from at least two of the following set of documents. All right. So what are these what are these documents that they are looking to see? For example, and 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 I can tell you that uh, not all of the applications will have all of these because it is quite difficult to do all of them, especially if you're living overseas and don't have enough cohabitation. But let's take a look. Number one is proof of joint ownership of residential property. Just think about this. If husband and wife have a joint residential property, it shows that they have combined their affairs together. Are you with me? Yeah, but if we're not, see, this was the deal when he got here. This was all going to be done. But because uh, we were living in separate countries, we yeah. didn't realize we had to do that. It, we didn't it's know. Okay. It, it's okay, Susan. I'm I'm talking general. I'm not talking specific to your case. I'm talking about yeah. universal yeah. for everybody. So they don't they don't expect that everybody will have all this, but uh, we, the assessment expects that at least uh, if you have two of them, at least then they have a little uh, clue to move forward and to assess. So number one is the residential property. The second one is the rental agreement showing. We sent that we have right. that. So, okay, R rental agreement. So, proof of joint utility accounts, like for example, if two people I, are I living. Didn't, 
I had to. I didn't know I could have done all that. I didn't know I had to. Okay. See, a lot uh, of this I'm not aware of. I know. I know you were that. That's why. That's why you. That's why you are here. Uh, the number number fourth is vehicle insurance. For example, when you have insurance, then you add uh, the other party on the insurance to show that they are living together. So that also shows yeah, that but he, he doesn't drive. So I, I would have no need to put him on my vehicle insurance. He doesn't I, drive. I, he doesn't have a license. We, we will we will we will assess your situation after we after we run through all the things. So look at look at government issued documents showing the same address. So you know living together, same address. Example like a driver mm -hmm. license. It could be a tax return. It could be a bank account. It could be a, a medical insurance account. There could be a lot of uh, government documentation where uh, where the uh, husband and wife are listed together. It shows that they have the same address of. Cohabitation. Uh, I don't other think in Canada, he could be on my medical. Well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come to your I'll come to your file uh, just just in a bit. All right. So okay. Take a look at other documents issued to principal applicant showing the same address. For example, <laughs> phone bills, pay stubs, tax forms, <laughs> bank, credit card, insurance policy, blah blah. So the universal theme, universal theme in all of this is. Cohabitation. If you can, um, uh, huh? if you can, uh, you know, follow the cohabitation. Cohabitation is the way of showing that um, our relationship is solid and stable enough that we are living together as a couple, as many many people do, and then we have combined our financial, legal, physical, uh, you know, all all our affairs together to create a household. So now. Now, if somebody has uh, had a marriage relationship for, let's say, one year or two year or you know, however long that is, um, then we expect the immigration expects that you will have at least some of them, at least one of them, maybe if not two, maybe at least one of them. Well, now, we had unfortunately, the when you had the what? The rental agreement. My my landlord came over and wrote us out a specific one. It was sent to Susan H and R Block in Canada. It was sent, uh, wrote up a special thing for me, and it was supposedly sent. And also uh, from our church, we got one from the pastor. It was sent off. I sent it all to Susan. Yeah, but I'll, what I'll happened come to after? You. I don't know. I'll I'll come to your case in a bit. Just just uh, so that I, I just want to uh, lay out the general provisions first, and then I'll come to your case. Uh, now the the visa officer have uh, a, a a set of you know fairly standard questions, fairly standard question to to discover what is going on in this relationship. And as you can tell, no case is uh, same. Every case will be different because there will be uh, you know. Yeah. And different nuances on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, as a as a uh, as somebody who's interested in interview and uh, what goes on in these interviews, because I have done I have done at least 500 plus cases like this. Oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, I, I, I everything yeah. you say. I trust I've you. Been, of course, I've, been, I've been doing this for more than more than five years and I have at least 500 plus cases of marriage sponsorship and half of them were interviews. So okay. I, I, know, I know what goes on in these interviews because yeah. clients, clients tell me. I mean, I have a live, you know, I have the, the statement on what was asked and how it was asked and how it was framed, everything. So, so the visa officer wants to know, for example, number one, what were the circumstances of meeting? How did you meet? Yeah. What was the intention of people coming together? What was the background? I mean, was there like uh, they were on a dating site or there was well, at random or something? What were the circumstances? That's number one. Number two, after the meeting, what what were the events leading up to friendship and eventually to the romance? Are you with me so far? Now, yeah, initial I friendship. And this is hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, <laughs> hang on, Susan. Hang on, just just a minute. Okay. Just, I know, I know you want to discuss your case, but just let me let me just complete my just uh, general outline, and then we'll come to. You. Yeah. So, so friendship, and then leading uh -huh. to romance, and then the actual marriage, if it is marriage, 
What happened mm -hmm. in marriage? Is this a civil ceremony or is this a religious ceremony? After the marriage, was there a, like a, in the custom of that country, was there a, typically in, if there's a honeymoon system, in many countries don't have honeymoon, strangely, but if there's a honeymoon, then did you go on a honeymoon? Show me some bills, show me some something. Uh, how much time did you spend together? What happened after the honeymoon? How much time did you actually stay together after the honeymoon? That means post marriage cohabitation. How much time did the husband wife live together? In some cases, I have seen uh, sponsors Oops. from Canada. They will fly in a certain country. They will marry and out they go in two weeks and they say, hey, I don't have time. I have a job. I have a mortgage to pay. I have something to do. I don't have to time to live with you. And even though they are laying out the basis of the foundation of marriage and relationship that they love each other, they can't uh, do things, uh, you know, um, without each other's presence. But all of a sudden, when they show, when the visa officer looks at, uh, they didn't have time or they didn't have an opportunity to live together. That's a little, little, they will downgrade the application right there. And and but that's uh, not there because I didn't. I, I didn't. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, Susan. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I I know you have. I know you have a lot to say. I I know you have a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, after after living together, after living together, for example, if two people are living together, then those evidence of uh, living together are something that we expect that you have some of the evidences. We can ask. Uh, you know. Uh, how did you spend time together? Did you integrate with your in-laws and friends and something? Did they accept you? Those things. Uh -huh. uh, how how have you how have you combined your affairs together? For example, when you live together, show me show me your hotel bills. Show me your uh, you know. I have it all. Well, hang on, just a minute. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And show show me other evidences. You know what happened. Uh, yeah. And then they also will not want to find out, uh, you know, uh, what is the travel history of the applicant? How much travel has he had? Uh, is this the first time he's he's uh, the the applicant? Uh, the, for example, the husband uh, is traveling to Canada. What is his economic and social background uh, in that country? Are they uh, at that country is, uh, you know, uh, is some somewhere where the immigration recognizes that everybody's trying to flee that country. Everybody's trying to, yeah. uh, you know, to come to Canada. Sometimes it does happen. Uh, you yeah. can imagine if if the, if the applicant, I'll just give you a, if for lack of other better example, I can tell you uh, some countries are visa exempt countries. If you, if you have a husband from Germany as compared to Somalia, come on. Everybody in Somalia is trying to. I'm not. To, I'm not going to criticize Somalia. By the way, I know people say, you know, it took Somalia. But no, I, if, I people, get your point. If, if people are trying to flee from Somalia and come to Canada, his interview it will be of a total different, uh, you know, flavor than somebody from Germany where they don't need a visa yeah. to come. So that way, they have to look at the social economic conditions. You know, what is the uh, income level? Is this the is this something that is primarily financial or economic reason why they want to come to Canada? Uh, did we want to find out those things? When, once the sponsor, like you, have returned to Canada after the honeymoon and living together, how much time do you spend uh, in contact with each other? How many how many times did they actually the sponsor went to that country to visit the spouse? How many times? What, yeah, well. is, the, what is the level of the contact? Uh, how much, uh, you know, is, is there an exchange of money between these two? They will ask you questions to the husband on what do you know about the sponsor? What do you know about the wife in, in Canada? Where does she work? How much income does she make? What is the name of the friends? Uh, how far is the work? You know, um, you know, what about previous, if there's a previous marriage, what about her previous marriages? If, does she have children from the previous marriages? What happened on those marriages? You know, do you talk to her? children from the previous marriages. They will ask you these questions. The purpose is, how much do you know about your wife in Canada? I am living in Somalia. I'm living in a third country. What do I know about my wife who I say that I am in love and I am in romance? I have married and I have lived, lived together. If you have lived together, we expect that you know everything about 
um, practically a lot about your wife than anybody else. So those those questions will be asked. So based on based on the consistency uh, of of the responses and completeness of the responses, the visa officer will make a subject deci subjective decision on whether even though they are from a different background, even though there are some things which are missing, they want to establish that after marriage, they, they are joined together in, 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 a, in a different way, like, like legal, physical, uh, you know, those, those, uh, those factors. So that's, that's, the, that's the point. Hang on just a moment. Let me just. Uh, yeah, put for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so the thing is, uh, we, we also have to look at the angle of when two people marry from one is Canadian and the other one is from a different country, they have to look at what is the common background between them. Are they from the same culture? Are they from the same socioeconomic background? Are they from possibly from the same religion? Are they uh, same um, marital status? For example, I've had so many cases where one person was divorced five times. The other person was was never married at all. So there's a big, big, uh, you know, big difference in their marital uh, status. Uh, so we look look at it's called compatibility factors. Uh, age difference is a big, a big thing from them. Uh, if in the if in those countries, if in those countries, typically uh, they, they don't uh, make a very great difference in age. They marry like within within a certain age. The visa officer wants to see how come how come uh, that guy bypassed all the social traditions okay. of that village. So or, where does this draw her personal opinion? Where well, is I'm, where I'm, I'm, I'm coming to it. I will answer your questions one by one. Yeah. I will I will I will okay. take all your questions. I, I know you have a lot of questions. But I, but for general, yeah. but for general, general discussion, I want to, I want to portray an outline. This is how it goes. Now, the the challenge is this: when when somebody applies for a sponsorship application, the immigration lawyer or the consultant has a duty to inform both the parties that this is your test. This is how the application will be yeah. assessed. So, so that yeah. to prep. In fact. In fact, people come. In fact, people come to me before marriage. By the way, now there, here's here's a difference. People people do come to me at mm -hmm. the time of marriage or before the time of marriage when they are in a relationship. They are going, uh, you know, together. They are dating, and then they will. Uh, they they sometimes tell me, "Look, I'm I'm going to get married in the next three months or six months. Tell me how can I prepare now? Because we will yeah. face a we will face a marriage assessment." Uh, you know, down the line, maybe after one year or so, I said you have yeah. come at the right time so that we can start building your foundation uh, of yeah. how how the how the documents go. So, if the if the immigration lawyer or consultant is not, uh, uh, at, it's like you know you're trying to drive on a highway and you do not know what the traffic conditions are. You will be in bit of surprise uh, eventually. Uh, you know, You'll be in trouble. If yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 going uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a difficult uh, terrain uh, when you're driving if you're not prepared for the weather or maybe yeah. you, you know yeah so that's 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 what is happening but I I know you have been refused uh, and you have a lot of anger and distress and uh, things that you're frustrated and you think the system is unfair I am ready to take your questions. Well, number one, I, I don't really have a lot. I, my 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 opinion is already formed. Um, I don't. We were not informed properly. I I trust. I'm just a kind of a trusting, outgoing person, and I just whatever she asked me, I sent down. I myself thought we had everything in order, and so did Kess. And as far as an appeal, we're not even interested in putting one in. Uh, We've decided we are, we'll wait and see after a year how we feel if we, because I can always go down there. It's not like we're stumped. So um, I just feel that we, we went in there not prepared, not properly prepared. When he was here in Canada, why did she not put in um, 
could she, and I, I'm not going to say why, I said, could she have put in an application to say for him to have his interview in Canada? Because you see, when we got that interview in Lagos, we thought we were doing the right thing. Oh my gosh, you got to get there because we don't want to screw everything, anything up. They say to come. So away he went. And now then he can never get back in. So if he hadn't had an interview together in Canada, I think it might have been a little bit more positive. I will I will give my comments about that option. But first, would you like to, and this is an option, by the way, would you like to share your uh, history on how did you meet your husband? Or no, it's, if it's too private, we can just ignore it. Uh, no, no, because... Okay. When we first, we were just friends. When we first got talking, he flipped a picture over to me and he said, you probably won't like me. And I looked at his picture and I text back and I said, what are you talking about? Well, because I'm, I'm black and we were, which of course is not an issue, but we were friends for a long time. Even when we got married, it was never spoken of. The fact that we got married, it was never thought of uh, or spoken about between us about him coming to Canada. Yeah. It just wasn't. Yeah. So, you know, that wasn't the, an issue. And so the thing is, all these things, uh, I, like I just feel, what's the point of rehashing it? If the damage is done, I mean, we're in this situation um, I'm okay, uh, but I do concern about his mental health right now. Yeah. So, so now, now you have an you have an option of going to the appeal. I mean, the government allows you to uh, appeal this in the Immigration Refugee Board. But mm -hmm. so, based on the evidences that I showed, uh, mm -hmm. you you hardly have one or two, not even two. I think you hardly have one of them. Okay, then why was, did Susan not know that we needed more? Because we didn't, we thought we were doing great. Well, it's not, it's not uh, um, uh, correct for me to comment on somebody's. Uh, no, I know, I know, don't, don't I, put no, yourself in a bad place. No. I, I can, I can, uh, I can, um, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to imagine that if you are in appeal, if you go in appeal, because you will be cross-examined uh, by, oh, the, minister, not by the, minister, the minister's council, and your husband will be too, and on the phone, and uh, uh, they will ask you. They will they will run through all all these factors as I just described, and mm -hmm. I I see you you don't have many, uh, and and you will be able to, uh, for example, like um, just just let, let me just pick at least one or two. Okay. Right. So, uh, if if they ask you uh, why why is there a big age difference, and, and I'm, this question is to the husband, and why did you not choose to marry somebody of your same age as the custom prevalent in your village? What will uh -huh. be his answer? What will be his answer? Yes. Um, I I've, I've said to this many times. And and he just, I don't think he even, the age isn't, isn't a, an issue. So I, I don't even, I don't think he even thought of it. I don't think it, it hasn't been an issue. Other people has more of an issue than what we have an issue with it. It's just the way it worked out. It's just the way it was. But the thing is, I, I'm not going to degrade, oh, I don't want to offend anybody. But I do feel that after three years of working with, and I, I like her personally, we should have been spoken to. We should have been informed. We should have been sending more down. I just sent what she asked me to do. And in my mind, not knowing immigration procedures, I felt, I thought, well, obviously she's, I'm sending down what I need. I did not realize uh, that I wasn't. I mean, how would I know? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know. I'm just sitting back trusting her. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that that obviously was uh, uh, was something that you know we regret now that uh, you were you were not uh, informed. And he of, wasn't informed not. of anything yeah. when he went into that PR 
interview, he was informed. He said he was scared to death. Yeah. So, so, so his nerve probably didn't help either. Yeah. So in these kind in these kind of interviews, it is always uh, uh, advisable to prepare yourself to understand what what we can expect. Yeah. As I, as I said, I, I, I laid out some factors, so it is always uh, do a, like a like, coaching, uh, like a like a to understand understand what to expect. I mean this yeah. this interview this interview is not an interview for driver license to see what is your name and date of birth. There's yeah. there's more there's more there's more happening in this interview than checking yeah. your passport number. Uh, so yeah. you know uh, the 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 applicant is if especially if the applicant has zero travel history. And the applicant has never had this marriage interview, uh, you know, any any visa interview. Uh, then then the, the 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 chances are that he will he will not give the answer with the visa officer is expecting. No, uh, and, and he did. And that's a that's a that's a problem. Uh, the the second question, which of course there's a big age difference. And the second question uh, I wanted to ask is. Uh, mm -hmm. That I think this was the question that 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 she, that he was asked. Right? Age difference was the focus that they were on, right? They, she, he said she never got off the age difference, and that was it. And he said, "I knew I wasn't accepted. Right? It wasn't. He was going to get denied right from from when he was in there." He said, "I knew that wasn't going to go well." All right. All right. So, <laughs> so if if I were so if I if I was assigned to prepare him for the interview, I would have dealt the age, you know. It's like it's he like going to the battle. Well, I, I know, but it's like it's like going to the battle and forgetting your sword at, at home. Your uh, your what? Uh, it's like going into the battle and and forgetting your weapons at home. Yeah, so yeah, if, that if, if we if if they knew that the age difference is something that 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 is the start and start and end of the interview. Uh, he should have he should have known what to say. Uh, look, just by just by saying that it's not an issue is not enough. Yeah, well, it isn't an issue. So what what more did they want? Well, <laughs> well, it's it's like this. It's like this. Let me just, let me just try to it's, let me just try to. The other people's but, issues. Well, how how about how about this? How about uh -huh. this? You you pretend that you are visa officer and you ask me a question and let me respond. OK. Go, go ahead and ask me the question. Why why did I marry somebody who is a very greatly difference in age? Go ahead and ask me this question. OK. And I, and let, let me respond. Is this a mock mock interview? OK. So I should ask you. What is your motive and your intention for marrying an older or younger woman? Whatever. Right. All right. An older All right. woman. Yes. So. So yeah, yeah. I, I I will give you the question anyway. I will give you the yeah. question. So just just repeat this question. Why why did you marry somebody who is thirty Quite years straight. your senior? Just just go yeah. just go ahead and ask this question. Go ahead and ask this question to me. Why did you marry somebody twice thir whatever twice your age? Yeah. Because I love her. That's you're, what he said. Oh, hang on, just a minute. Just my answer is not okay. complete. Just, just listen. Just, just, just be patient and listen okay. to my answer. Yeah. But and the, by the way, this is not a, like a copy and paste answer that people can say. Hey, yeah. Let's give this answer. To yeah. You, all right. But this is this is the way this is the way to to handle this. Yeah. Look, I am of the marriage age. I am looking yeah. for partners. Just, 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 just keep listening. Follow through. All right. Just don't interrupt right now. And I, I will okay. get into my flow. I will get into my flow and give you my answer. I'm talking to the visa officer. I'm giving my answer to him, to him or her. So my my age is 33. I am of the marriageable age. It's time to get married. My parents want me to get married, so I'm looking for partners. I'm looking for partners anywhere, everywhere in my village, in my city, in my country, anywhere. I am on the social site. I'm on the Facebook or whatever site. I'm on this site. And I'm looking for partners. I'm talking. I'm talking to find out compatibility. Who do I like? Who does? You, you would know, want who, him. Uh, hang on, hang on, just a minute, just okay. a minute. Okay. Not, don't interrupt my answer. No. Do, do not, do not interrupt my answer because my answer, un, because I, my answer is the one which will get me the visa right now. Yeah. If if the if the visa officer interrupts me, I will say, sir, stop, sir. Don't interrupt me. I I don't want the okay. visa officer to interrupt me. All right. Okay. So I have to start all over again now. 
I have to press the okay. reset button and start all over again. Okay. So I am of the marriageable age. I'm looking for partners. I'm searching for partners. I'm searching for partners anywhere, everywhere, in my village, in my city, in my country, wherever. I'm looking for a certain profile. I'm certain looking for a certain personality. I have sent messages to many people. I've sent messages to five people here, or six people there, some. I have the record. Look, I have printed the record. Take a look at it. I sent a message to this girl. I sent a message to this woman. I sent a message, blah, blah, blah. And they, they responded like this. They said something. I didn't like her. I didn't like her. I didn't, I didn't like what she said. I didn't like her language. I didn't like this. I didn't like this. But hey, I like this guy. I'm sorry. I like this woman. Sorry. I like yeah. this woman. And, and I thought, hey, let's talk. And then I started exchanging messages. And she sent the message back. And we are saying hello, hi, and then things are progressing and we are going on with. And by the way, I have the chat history. I have the chat history of talking with her for over mm -hmm. one year or two years or three years. I have the chat history. Take a look. Take a look at the message, what, what she's writing to me. Take a look at the message, what I'm writing. Have I, have I ever said that I want to marry you on day one? No. I'm trying to find out what her interests are. I'm trying to find out what her hobbies are. I'm trying to find out. Uh, what does she like? I'm trying to find out, you know, what kind of husband, what kind of partner does she like to have? And I'm I'm checking uh, on all the boxes. She looks like a nice person, and she likes me, and we are responding. And look at my look at my chat history. Can you read my travel chat history, please? I'm talking to visa officer. Visa officer, can you read my chat history? Can you look at the comments? There's nowhere in the span of two years or three years, I've never said. Hey, bring me to Canada. I want to come to Canada. I, I'm saying, look, I want, I want a compatible partner who I can spend time with. Unfortunately, there's an age difference. So what? That's that's not that's not my primary motivation. So this is my first part of my answer. So I'm I'm not done yet. I'm going to the second part of my answer. Look, what whatever discrepancy is there in my background, all right, that's fine. But look at look at the events leading up to romance, engagement, marriage, and, and post-marital behavior. Look at how, how have we integrated our lives together. She knows everything about my family. She has met my, my brother, sisters, friends. She knows everything about my village. I mean, if she was not interested in me and her family, why would she come and spend time in my country? Come on. Exactly. And, 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 and then, and then I, I had a chance to go to Canada. I spent six months with her. I met everybody. I met her friends. I met her, uh, mm -hmm. her children from, from the previous marriage. I, we spent time together. We went to Rocky Mountains. We went to shopping together. We were Costco together. Hey, by the way, I remember in Costco, we bought something together of our own choice. We jointly decided that we like this furniture. There, there, there's a lot in the answer. There's a lot in the answer that I can go on and on and on. I can go on with this answer for at least 30 minutes. Yeah. If I'm not interrupted, I can I can I can put this entire application in one single answer. And by the way. This answer is the one which is which is which is a yes and no in their mind. So. I, what what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm trying to uh, demonstrate to you and and other people who will watch this is this. Look, every circumstances uh, it, it will vary. I mean, so every background is different and circumstances are, are, are different. You have to know, you have to put yourself in the mind of the visa officer to understand what are they looking at? What are they deciding at? What is the stumbling block? What do they want? And you need to prepare your notes and prepare your answers in advance so that you can give them what they want. Not if you go unprepared, if you walk in blind, there's absolutely no way you can hit the mark. All right, so that, that so that's it, what it is. It, it, anyway, go, it, go it, ahead. It, what, it, your, what your reaction is? What's this? What is your reaction now? We weren't informed. It's over and done with, and there's no point hashing it over anymore. Okay, okay, but uh, you know, obviously, um, uh, you know, what what has happened has happened, and um, oh man, I I I I see you crying, and you know, un unfortunately, I oh my. That's not good. <laughs> because number one, we we had never any intentions. Uh, I had never even discussed him coming to Canada before we got married. So how can somebody pass judgment and say this? Yeah, 
the because somebody, uh, because somebody else did. You know what I'm saying? No, we weren't yeah, prepared. I'm, we had no clue. Yeah, the that, 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 that yeah the the biggest the biggest problem is that you were unprepared for this battle. And you did not know what the enemy is coming at with you. What uh, what questions? What uh, uh, you had no uh, you had no way to defend. And that's, no, we had no defense. Well, what can I say, Sandra? And unfortunately, oh, yeah. yeah. But I I want to. Uh, uh, well, let's let's look at uh, let's summarize this and then give you uh, give you uh, my my feedback on what what is in the future now. May I? Uh, I don't know because I'm not paying out a whole bunch of money for something that maybe will be accepted or maybe won't. Oh, that's if okay. I that's have okay. Got you a, can... If I have got a, a sure thing or a guarantee, I'm not putting any money. And he just he feels the same way. He said, "Don't even." Yeah. Don't yeah. even go there. I'm. I'm not. I'm not charging any money for anything. You don't have to pay me anything for this no. at all. Yeah, I to do. anybody. It's not fair to you. It's yeah. your time. Yeah, I yeah I'm not. It's a uh, it's a uh, it's it, it's just of interest to me. That's okay. You you can uh, you can uh, you know you can pick. I mean, there are more than. Gosh, I don't even know. There are more than twenty thousand lawyers plus in Canada. Uh, you can uh, call anybody and ask them. Uh, would you like to take my case and then see what uh, they say? But no, but uh, based. But based on based on based on what we have, um, I I don't even know what they will argue on, uh, and I'm you know, uh, and, yeah. So uh, without without living together, without uh, spending time together, uh, you will not have enough evidence going forward. Yeah, but Let's, see, that that's not fair because the circumstances were that we couldn't. It yeah. wasn't that we didn't want to. It was that the circumstances were as such. So that wasn't fair to be judged by by that. And the fact of the matter, we were not informed. We were not given enough information. And if I had had a whole, 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 whole bunch of money in my bank, uh, more than I, I went through a lot as it is, but if I could have afforded a real high powered immigration lawyer, I'm sure a lot of this wouldn't happen. Even if I had known about you, this, a lot of this wouldn't have happened. You would have told us, you would have prepared us, you would have uh, made sure we had the right, but that's too late now. There's no point. There's nothing we can do. It's done and over with. And I mean, it's not just me. It's, you know, my family and we're so happy. And I have, we had mutual friends here. He sang in the church. Every, the people just loved him at the church. They were always asking him to come and sing out Sundays. Uh, I went off to work and he <laughs> went singing, you know, but it was fun. It's okay. It was a good time. We got the memories. Well, uh, we'll see what, uh, if we can get into another, if he could get a job in another country, then I'm, I'm happy to move anywhere. But like he feels, Nigeria is not a promising place to be. And I agree. Yeah. It's not a promising place for a future for anybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know the situation down there is not good, and that's, so that's another that's another factor that's is in the background because the visa officer uh, who is in the Canadian embassy in in Nigeria they know that uh, there is uh, economic problem, unemployment, and people yeah. want to people yeah. want to run out, run away, and they they know this, yeah. and yeah. and it is, and it is a possibility that. Uh, that many people who are, it's, I'm not saying in your case, uh, especially, there is a possibility that in many, uh, many cases, uh, young people are using marriage as an exit uh, uh, clause from Nigeria. So that's a, that's well a known that this is happening. It's well known that this is yeah, happening. Yeah, I know. I know. So it's that's why that, well. that, that, that is why that that is why it was very important to to elevate those concerns. Uh, yeah, you know, with the visa officer saying, "Hey, look, I'm not trying to just <laughs> run away like this because, because, but you know, there's no point of blaming anybody." But uh, these questions no. were not not uh, uh, you know known before. But uh, yeah. okay, uh, yeah. I I I um, 
I, I feel sorry for your affairs and I wish you uh, best of, uh, you know, uh, best of luck for your future, whatever yeah. step you, you take. But I, I just want I just want you to I just want you to leave with at least uh, two two questions that you must ask, no matter which immigration lawyer you choose in the future, today or the next 10 years, whenever, always ask two questions, please, if you can remember those two questions. So I am in front of the immigration lawyer. I'm I'm going to ask this question to the immigration lawyer. Imagine that I'm asking this question to the immigration lawyer. Sir, do you have experience in marriage visa interviews in Africa? Yeah, OK. That's the number one question. All right. If the if the immigration lawyer, not all immigration lawyers or consultants will have those experience. If they, no. if, they if they do, yes, uh, if if they do, then you ask them, sir, can you give me some client referrals? Can you give me a name of one or two so that okay. I can get some feedback? If you ask these two questions, I am. I'm going to assure you that you will nail down the best possible immigration lawyer that matches the requirements of your background. Many she people told me she had never dealt with with night with the Africa, Nigeria. I think Susan uh, uh, specifically does Filipinos. From the Philippines, okay. I think pretty much. Well, yeah, I, and I'm, uh, not playing, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not having a, a bitter heart. I'm just saying there was some really bad mistakes made that had I been aware of, I would have made sure we went a different route. But I wasn't aware that I was going down the wrong path. Do you know what I'm saying? I wasn't aware of it. So anyway, the damage is done. There's nothing we can do but to get on with it. And, See what life brings. It's interesting. It's not going to split us up. We've talked about it, and it's not going to damage us as a couple. But we do now need to make some serious choices as to what we're going to do. And I'm free. Like he knows, I'm free to go. I can pick up and go anytime I want. Nothing holding me. Just my cat, Cookie. I can take Cookie. So the benefit of today's discussion is that whenever the second application or the second appeal or second discussion comes through, uh, he will be much more prepared now because yeah. you, you yeah. know now what to expect. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that was my purpose of this discussion to to know what to expect. Yeah, and I appreciate right. that. I mean, it's brought up a lot of other points to me that, like I said, had I been aware of it, uh, things could have been a, gone a lot different route. But I get your point as to just the lack of information. But we didn't know we had a lack of information. We didn't know, <laughs> you know, how would we know? We were just going by what Susan asked. If she asked for this, I sent. If she asked for that, I sent. And that was it. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. It's much appreciated. It's not taken advantage of. It's all taking into my heart. And uh, yeah, I see. Can't change okay. the path. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Have a great thank you. Good luck. Yeah, bye-bye.